Once upon a time, there were two women in a rickety blue van driving straight into battle on the front lines of World War I. These women weren't here to fight, though. They were here to help save soldiers' lives. Marie Curie, who was in the driver's seat, had designed this special blue van so it could hold an x-ray machine in the back, along with an exam table, some darkroom equipment to help develop the x-ray pictures, and an electrical generator called a dynamo so that they had enough electricity. It was very crowded in there. Once Marie found a safe space to park the van, her daughter Irene jumped into action. Irene was only 17 years old, but she was just as fearless and determined as her mom. The two of them threw open the van doors and started guiding wounded soldiers inside so they could be x-rayed and examined. At first, the soldiers didn't know what was going on or why these women were even there. But Marie explained that she was the new director of the Red Cross Radiology Unit and she knew what she was doing. Pretty soon, Marie, Irene and their blue vans became known throughout the land, and by the end of the war, they had helped save over a million lives. But wait, maybe we should go back to the beginning of the story, since it took so much hard work and scientific research to even get here. Before there were x-rays or world wars, there was a little girl named Maria Skłodowska, who was born in Warsaw, Poland in 1867. Maria was the youngest of five children and her parents were both teachers. Maria loved school. She learned to read and write at a very young age and was especially in love with books about science. But in those days in Poland, girls weren't allowed to stay in school very long. They were supposed to learn how to cook and clean and take care of their family instead. Maria refused. She and her sister came up with a plan. They'd heard there was a university in France that was allowing women to attend. Maria said she'd work as a governess, which is like a cross between a nanny and a teacher, to help pay for her older sister to go to the French university, if her sister would do the same for her after graduation. It took six years, but after Maria's sister graduated and became a doctor, Maria moved to France and went to university. She also changed her name to Marie, so she would feel more French. And she filled every minute with reading, writing, and studying science. She was thrilled. In 1894, Marie met a professor of physics named Pierre Curie. They were both fascinated by two recent scientific discoveries, a kind of electromagnetic wave called an X-ray and a new invisible ray that came out of an element called uranium. Marie and Pierre were both passionate about figuring out how these mysterious rays worked. They talked endlessly about their ideas and soon it became clear they were in love. When Marie and Pierre got married, they used their wedding money to buy matching bicycles for outdoor adventures. But most of the time, they were in a lab together, huddled over beakers, test tubes, and large metal equipment. Imagine a small, dim laboratory that the Curies have made out of an old shed. There are pots of chemicals bubbling over small flames and a mist of sharp, acidic smells. There are jars filled with different colored powders and crystals. Marie is outside stirring a huge vat of chemicals with a long metal rod. Pierre is inside, standing over a large metal tube, trying to measure the minerals left over after boiling, once all of the energy has come out of them. It was very dangerous work, experimenting with all of these powerful substances. Lots of times, Marie and Pierre were breathing in poisonous gases. They didn't have protective clothes or gloves, so their hands swelled and their skin peeled. No matter how much it hurt, though, they kept going because they felt sure they were onto something important. 
And they were right. Together, Marie and Pierre discovered two new elements in the periodic table, which they named polonium after Marie's homeland and radium because it gave off such strong rays. The Curies also came up with the word radioactivity to describe elements giving off rays of energy when their nuclei break down. There are different kinds of radioactivity and radiation that we experience every day. The sun radiates light and warms the earth. The solar system radiates cosmic rays from outer space. Even our bones and muscles have naturally occurring radioactivity. Marie and Pierre were thrilled to learn about all of these different ways radioactivity can occur. And in 1903, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their incredible work. That day, Marie became the first woman ever to get this world-famous honor. Marie and Pierre were not only busy in the lab together, they were also making a family. In 1897, Marie gave birth to a girl named Irene. Irene was very curious and shy. She was also lonely, with both of her parents working in the lab so many hours each day. Until one day, her grandpa Eugene came to take care of her. Irene loved playing with her grandpa. The two of them went on outdoor adventures, read poetry, and even discussed politics together. Grandpa Eugene made Irene feel smart and confident, and they were the best of friends. When Irene and her little sister Eve started going to school, their mom Marie was very disappointed by the Paris public school system. She decided that in order for her daughters to get a great education, she'd have to teach them herself with a few of her very smart friends. Lucky for Marie, her friends were all geniuses and scholars. Together, they started a little school in their homes called The Cooperative. So Irene wound up getting a world-class education without having to put on a backpack. Marie also made sure that her girls were always active with horse riding, hiking, swimming, skiing, and acrobatics. She wanted them to always take risks and challenge themselves. When World War I began, Marie put her laboratory research on hold. She told her daughters that she had to figure out a way to use science to help their country through this awful time. She knew that x-rays could travel through the human skin to make pictures of what's going on inside the body. They could save soldiers' lives by helping doctors see bullets, shrapnel, and broken bones. So Marie came up with a plan to go to the front lines of battle and set up x-ray machines and small traveling clinics. I want to go too, Irene said. It was a pretty crazy idea. Irene was only 17 years old. She just started attending university. But Irene insisted. She signed up for a nursing course in addition to all her university classes so she'd know what to do. Meanwhile, Marie hounded the French government to give her funds and equipment. She got wealthy friends to donate cars and convinced automobile shops to transform their cars into vans. Then she got all the equipment she needed, like x-ray machines, generators, and examining tables. She trained a dedicated group of nurses to go with her too. In October of 1914, Marie's first fleet of traveling medical vans, called the Petite Curies, was ready. She and Irene made sure little Eve was being looked after at home. Then they loaded up their blue van and took off, headed into the unknown. Once they got to the battlefront and threw open the van doors, the petite curies were flooded with patients. Day after day, night after night, Marie, Irene, and their team of nurses helped the wounded men into their vans and had them lay under x-ray machines. 
the x-rays were quick and painless and could figure out whether they had broken bones or if they were suffering from bullets and shrapnel lodged inside their bodies. It was grueling work, but Marie and Irene were excited to do it. After being in a laboratory for so long, gathering and analyzing tiny particles, here they were, out in the fields, saving lives. Marie and Irene depended on each other a lot during this time, not only for each other's brilliant minds, but also for moral support. After the war was over, Irene finished her degree in mathematics and physics and became Marie's lab assistant. Marie started her own scientific institute called the Radium Institute, where she studied all the different ways radioactivity could help people who were sick. She had about three or four dozen researchers working with her, including Irene. They researched different ways to use radium so they could diagnose and shrink cancer cells. One day, Marie asked Irene to train a new member of their laboratory team. He was a chemical engineer named Frederic. Irene and Frederic had a lot in common, and they really hit it off. Soon they got married and started doing research together, just like Marie and Pierre had done years before. Irene and Frederic were both passionate about using radioactive elements in medicine. They were sure radiation could be the tool to many new treatments. And they were right. At the Radium Institute, Irene and Frederic figured out a way to artificially make atoms become radioactive, which was a huge achievement. When Irene handed her mother a test tube filled with newly radioactive phosphorus, Marie beamed with pride. By making their own radioactive elements, they could make so many more medical treatments possible. Sadly, both Marie and Irene died young, most likely because they were exposed to so many radioactive materials without any of the protections we have today. Eve went on to become a very distinguished writer and wrote a beautiful biography of her mom and the important work she did. Radiation and radioactive treatments are used all over the globe now in many medical procedures and to help treat cancer patients. That is all because of Marie and Irene's dedication and courage. Between the two of them, they won four Nobel Prizes for their discoveries. They also opened a hospital that was run by and for women. They inspired each other to always push harder for answers and to not be afraid of the unknown. As Marie said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Every day, millions of lives are saved all over the world, thanks to Marie and Irene's curiosity, daring, and determination. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Haley Dapkis with sound design and mixing by Brian Skipworth and Mambo Media. It was written by Abby Scher. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Eve Rodsky. Original theme music was composed and performed by Elettra Bargiacchi. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel!